Hi there, I have some fabulous table linens to share with you today, like this, and this, and even this. I'm Diane with South House Designs, and I am sharing with you the technique that I use to create all of these. So you can now move forward to paint your own table linens with no artistic skill whatsoever. It's tracing and filling in, and that is it. So come along, let's get started. Start by picking some line art or clip art for your design, printed, preferably two copies. You want a fairly heavy cotton or linen fabric, no stretch, no shiny, glossy, or heavily textured fabric. Pre-wash and dry your fabric to eliminate any sizing and to get any shrinkage out of the way. Tape one of the two print printouts to the back side of your fabric. You'll be amazed at how easily you can see the lines through even fairly heavily fabric. With the permanent marker, and that's the key, permanent marker, trace the outline of your design. Here I'm using a Sharpie fine point marker in classic black. I am just doing the major outlines. It is helpful if you have a scrap of fabric to practice with. It's like drawing on the texture of the fabric rather than on paper. It, it's something that kind of is nice to practice. Keep in mind you do not have to use black. Any permanent or marker will, will do. The second copy is helpful to have close by if your design has some detail that's hard to make out through the fabric. Once I finished the main outlines, I decided to use a thin micron marker to help mark the stripes of the watermelon rind. I chose not to outline the seeds until after the paint dried. Here is my first example experiment. You can see the difference between the seeds painted before and the seeds painted after. And for this case, I just preferred them after. Time for painting. I like to use basic wax paper for a paint palette to blend my paints. The paints flow and they blend easily and there is no cleanup. Just roll it up and toss it in the trash. Now, a box of Dixie cups is a must-have in my craft room. I use them for everything, from mixing paints like I'm doing here, to sorting beads and shells, so holding ornaments and eggs when I'm decorating for those seasons. I mean, it's just amazing. The specific colors and brands I'm using are listed below in the description, but really, I encourage you to use what you have on hand and what is pleasing to your eye. Start by adding a small squirt of your pinkish watermelon color to a cup. I mixed a little red in mine, and if you are mixing couples colors, do that first. Then add your textile medium. Follow the directions on your bottle, but mine is a 50% mixture, or two parts paint to one part fabric or textile medium. I just eyeballed it. Then mix that up really well, and then mix in a bit of water. You want a paint to be fairly thin so that it absorbs into the fibers. You do not want it sitting on top as a separate coat. Mix it really well. A little side note, my little mixing sticks, yeah, those are from my nightly Yasso bars. Oh my goodness, it is so good. If you haven't tried one yet, you must. Salted caramel is my favorite and the Hubs loves the coffee chocolate chip. They have them at Walmart for much less than our large regional grocery store. Now, anyway, back to our project at hand. Start at the top of your design, show so that you're not working on top of wet paint. That's kind of a basic hint, but you know, it's amazing how many times I've done it too. All those different shades of watermelon pink are from the same cup of deep bright pink. I put a squirt of white paper on my wax paper palette and then topped it with a half size squirt of the textile medium. Then I mixed those thoroughly with my paintbrush. To one side of the white, I added just the tiniest bit of pink from my paintbrush into the white. I added that almost white pink to the center of my top watermelon. Back to my palette, I added a touch more pink paint onto the wax paper and blended in white and added that to the first watermelon. I repeated that again, but blending a slightly darker version and adding it to the watermelon. And then the final fourth layer is the pink straight out of the cup. If you think it's a drying a bit too quickly for you to blend it like you might want, just give the watermelon a quick squirt of water from the misting bottle. Now that I have my system, I did two watermelons at a time, starting with the most, the almost white centers working outwards to the deepest pink next to the rind.
For the green, I mixed one color of mid-range green, added the textile medium and the water for a good consistency. I then used this mid-range green, or mid-range green, to color in the rinds. Then next, just like I did with the pinks and reds, I mixed it with some white on the wax paper palette for the light stripes on the skin. and then mixed some of the original mid-range green into a squirt of darker green, again on the wax paper, and blended that for the darkest green of the skin. Then once all the paint dried, I drew in the seeds with the thinner micron pen. And here's a tea towel I made using the exact same method of tracing some clip art and then coloring them in with fabric paint I made by adding textile medium to simple acrylic paints. Here I painted using a photograph on my husband's phone of the pear painting that hangs above our dining table. I tried to keep the colors similar and the impressionist style similar. I often work from photographs and this really helps me. The last thing that needs to be done once the paint is all dry is to heat set it. This will keep the paint from washing off or even fading. It's not hard at all. It sounds like it might be something special, but it's really not hard at all. The one thing to remember is to always use a press cloth, which is just a fancy term for a piece of thin, preferably cotton fabric. Lay it over the painting and then iron it at a low to medium heat setting. Uncover it and let cool. And you are done. You may be asking if heat setting really works. Well, here's proof. When I was testing out my theory, I played with some fabric paint I made using the exact method I shared in this video. I then cut it in half and ran it through the one ran one side through the washer and dryer. Can you tell which one was washed? The only way I can tell is because the cut edge of the washed one frayed a bit in the washer and it also shrank a little bit. But other than that, they look identical. I was amazed myself. So yes, heat set it, use the textile medium, and you can use the craft, the cheap craft um, acrylic paints on fabric and make some wonderful, wonderful customized textiles for your home and for gifts. I hope this helped you. I hope this inspired you to go try some of this. And you can bet that I will be back with many more videos of different techniques or different um, twists to this same basic technique. Till next time, please subscribe so you don't miss out on those. And I appreciate you being here with me today. Thank you.